This is DJ745 for World of Reggae live and direct in Jamaica. We're here at the Area 39 studios up in the hills in Kingston. It's a bright, beautiful morning, and I'm here with multi talented producer and musician Stephen Lenke Marsden. I'd like to welcome you to all the viewers of World of Reggae. Good morning. Um, welcome to my studio, Area 39. This interview, I'm very happy for it. First real interview. Thank you, World of Reggae. We're really excited to be here as well because, you know, the sun is shining. You've got a beautiful view from outside as well. Um, I can see why you love staying here and making so much good music. It's very quiet and it's like not the regular studios in Jamaica. We have the, you know, the, the people coming in and, um, you know, you could meditate. You could pull the music from the sky and you're alone and the, the computer and the uh, mixing board. It's peaceful. Yeah. I think that's the vibes that we get, you know, um, having been here for a while now, the, the, the vibes that we get is, is very peaceful and tranquil and maybe the right environment for the type of music that you want to make, right? Yes, and it's green also, a lot of birds and stuff. And um, you can just go outside and just look at the hills. Of, of course, there's a hill in the back, a hill in the front and just meditate. Yeah. And I noticed you have some really nice fruit trees, some banana trees as well. Yes, we have banana trees, apple trees, and, and, and you know, when we're doing work and the artists are like, come through, they cut a banana, take some lime, take some apple. <laughs> this is, it's all fun. Definitely sounds like it. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Now, I have to congratulate you on the album that you released, I think, in August 2018, Self Taught. Yeah. Well, Self Taught is an album now. I just, I just sat one day and said to myself, I didn't go to form like a real music school and I said to myself if you ask the, the regular musician if you went to school say no I was self-taught and they said wow that's that's really cool to do something like that for those people just went on the piano got some drum drum beats and just wrapped it up mm. yeah I mean, what I really like about that album is the v number of different styles of music that you have. So it's not just straight dancehall or reggae, for which obviously you're really well known for, but there's elements of Latin, hip hop, soul as well. What was your ultimate aim with trying to create that album? What were you trying to deliver for the people? I was trying to show them the diversity in Lenky as a musician slash producer, because most people have me as a producer and the wall the radium is always the beat the beat the beat but really and truly i'm a keyboard player so i wanted to to show the talent and 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 the vast um the, the maturity of me lenky mars then as a musician and different style and genre of music i listen to the, like the latin it's almost classical it was a mixture of all r b some of us just thinking about nothing and just creating from the sky <laughs> really and truly yeah you must have quite a varied collection of music in iTunes or something because just listening to some of the influences on that particular album, I'm thinking that what you probably listen to, maybe in the car or something, must be very, very varied. Yeah, man, I listen to a lot of uh, music around the world. Of course, you know, I've been touring from 92. So I've been to Europe. I've been to uh, just everywhere, Africa. And guess what? I listen to all the collection of songs, beats, melodies, mainly the melodies and come out to Jamaica and try to, to, to fuse it with, the, with the, the core, the dance hall, or the reggae music to get, get that balance, to get that sound from the Caribbean. Mm. Yeah. I mean, when I'm sort of thinking about that album, you know, some of the tracks that come to mind include Keys from the Top Draw, um, Negril 1989. Yes. Negril 1989 is, is when I, I was just, I left Kingston, I went to Negril, I was actually playing in the hotels, and uh, some piano music and stuff, and that's why I named it Negril 1989. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that you had um, a career in the hotel circuit yes. beforehand. Okay. Yeah, I've been in the hotel for a bit, like many years, playing in, in the bands, playing at the, um, the cocktail pianos and stuff like that. Just decided to come back to Kingston. I'm from Kingston, to come back to Kingston and just start production, playing in bands and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the questions that I always like to ask musicians and artists is how do you actually come about naming maybe, for example, the rhythm or maybe the actual songs? Because obviously the self-taught is predominantly instrumentals, right? Yeah. So how do you actually develop the name? So where does, you know, something like Jamaica's Neighbour become a title? The engineer, Stephen Stanley, was a great guy. You know Stephen Stanley, right? Yeah. He's right. So Stephen Stanley, 
he's mixing the song and I'm doing this this Latin feel and, and to be honest he's saying yeah they think it is sounds good so feel Cuban hey Jamaica neighbor so he really came up with that that's where that that came <laughs> up with so that guy was is really a good guy of naming stuff you know what I'm saying yeah, Stephen yeah. Stanley okay. but like for me travel the world again and like for instance the Diwali festival you know traveling and wow wicked name you know families who celebrate the Diwali festival in, in London so you will pick up name from all over the place you know what I mean? And then you listen to the beat, you feel it, it fits. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we have a vocal on the self-taught, um, Rapper in the Mitz. Let's talk about Rapper in the Mitz. So that's Rapper in the Mitz is direct. The, the vocalist on it is Q Mars then, and he's my son. He's a, a, a piano player, guitar player, he's an all-rounded musician. And um, this is like, I'm trying to like show the world the next talent, the com- new coming from from next generation from um the lenky camp really and truly so i just put i think he did like an eight bar just a snippet of him something like that yeah so do you yourself come from a musical background or family because i know you're obviously trying to push q into music but do you come from a musical family yourself yeah man i come from a big musical family my um my my father's mother is is actually a piano violin um teacher player then my mother's side, her her father is from Cuba, and they are Latin piano players, and so they so it's like an infusion of the the, the two cultures. And then me Lenky is from Jamaica with the reggae, and the talent and just, just work. Fusing, fusing. It's just fusing all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Q and Q is from a musical background too. You know, his grandfather is Light Parks, his mom play piano, like White Parks and We the People. Okay. So, you know, it's all music. It's all around the music. All around music. Yeah. Okay. yeah man. So this album is on your own record label, which is called Diwali Records. Um, and it's been available for quite a good while now. And how do you feel that the people of the world have been receiving self-taught? I think they love it, really and truly. I've been touring with Sly and Robbie and people coming up, Linky, we like, we like this EP, we like this album, we like the songs, we like the track. Well, you're very brave to do something like this, you know what I'm saying? So the, for the musical side of it, they like it. But the commercial side, the pop side, no. Because, you know, people want the commercial stuff, the billboard hits, the this, that. But I wasn't doing it for no billboard hit. I was just doing it for the music purpose, mm-hmm. as a musician, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... Let's go back a little bit then. So Diwali Records, obviously it's named after the all-conquering rhythm track, the Diwali. Um, that was way back in 2002. So, so really and truly Diwali came out on 4040 label, to be honest with you. And I like, I like, I like the label and it's nice, but Diwali was so... Sp- it, the big rhythm, big name. I said, you know what? We have to capture the name. The name right. This is the reality and the <laughs> Diwali Records. Okay. And that's where it all came from. Came from. Yeah. yeah. So... The actual name Diwali Rhythm, mm. is that just basically inspired from obviously seeing the Festival of Diwali, the Festival of Lights, or right. is there any other deeper connections? Yeah, man, I have my family in um, London and they celebrate Diwali. Okay. And just, just magically, it was just matching the beat, you know? So it's just perfect and the Festival of Lights and that type of person. Bright, the colors, I like the purple, the, the, just, just, just beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that that rhythm track, I mean, off the top, I'm a vinyl person, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've got all of those tracks on vinyl. Now, I'm thinking that I must have maybe 15, 20 different versions right. on that yeah. rhythm track. Mm-hmm. Did you ever imagine that you would receive or achieve the level of success that y- you have with that particular rhythm? Never, never, never. I did the rhythm just for a change. In, in For me, you know, you listen to the musical landscape like in Jamaica and it's like it was going less one direction it was really nice I love it and I did it for many years but as I started to produce and I said I wanted to try something different so thought about it brainstorm it as I'm always pulling things from the sky pulling it down honestly that's that's my thing let's take it from the sky you never hear it yet. and so I did the beat just a regular little beat nothing about it nothing hard nothing and just released it and it just, people just loved it. And then when the artists start flowing in, I realized that we need to put the keyboard styles on it because I didn't want to make it as a regular, like one 
rhythm. Then you have the 20 artists on the one beat. I said, Lenky, use your talent, use your talent. And that's where I went in you know, and started to, to overdub stuff because right. prior to that, I always worked for the producers, overdubbing their stuff, making their stuff as a keyboard player. So I said, you know what, let's, let's, let's take this up and do it. Imagine I'm, I'm producing for, for 20 different producers then, really and truly. I just mm. did it on the one beat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just found it was just great. Mm. Didn't know it was going to hit though, for real. Never thought about it. No, no. Never. I mean, I think back then, um, how we used to access music, you know, okay, the digital music was starting to come through, but really and truly, it was the 45s. Yes. So I remember that the artists that were on that rhythm, they kind of came in batches over into the UK. So all 20 were not released in one go. Thank you. So they, you know, there was like maybe five or six that came through first. Right. It gained a bit of momentum. Right. More came through, more came through. And then before you know it, it's playing on every single radio station. Right. They loved it. They loved it. <laughs> they loved it. And it okay. Just came in after six after six after, and just, it just went good. Went good. Yeah. 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 So. Well, it's good that we're here to be able to tell the tale years later as well. So I know that you work very closely with people like the Sly and Robbie band. Oh, yeah. You know, you're 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 part of the family, right? The taxi gang. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the gang. You are the gang. I am the taxi gang. Those are my like my the real heroes in my life. Right. Sly and Robbie, you know what I'm saying? Trust me. Teach me a lot about the music industry, about music, about musical style, about patience. And, you know, there's, there's so much stuff, the business, mm. you know, a lot of stuff. So much stuff. Yeah, man. When you say they taught you about patience, what exactly do you mean? Expand on that. Yeah, meaning that, you know, you do, you do, you're making the music, you, you know, sometimes you want to just try to get out there and be a star. It, the same day, the next day, we, and Sly and Robbie is always saying, you know, you take your time. Robbie is always telling me they're like a pipe dripping in the industry. Tip, tip, while someone turn it on and just finish. Okay. So link it, just relax, do your music, focus on what you're doing. That guy's happening, that's nice for him. Nothing is wrong with that. Do your stuff when your time come, it's come. It's, come. it's okay. just simple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, here in 2019, we're really excited because you've been releasing so much music, it seems, over the past year. You know, you had a great project with Richie Stevens. Yeah, yes. beautiful, beautiful project. We got Richie, Lego, Lego. Yeah, nice, beautiful project. Um, we just did a video and uh, we was, was, was putting some strength behind it and getting it out there. And I love that project. Richie's one of my star. Um, I played on this first, so his, his label also, She's a Mania, got my break right there also. You know what I'm saying? A, a lot of people helped me in the music business. Trust me, so much people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Richie's one of them. Okay. Yeah. And at the moment, you've recently just released some projects with artists that include Anthony Redrose as well. Um, Anthony Redrose's project is so exciting because there are five vocals and five instrumentals as well, and that's called No Limits. Yes, that's it's out. It's, it's no limits. Beautiful, and we have some nice songs on it. And we did. We got. We got off track. We did a, like a ballad, which is very different for Anthony Red Rose and the Jamaican. It's really, really nice. Check it out. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, we've actually got Anthony Red Rose right over there, so we're actually going to introduce him in and let's hear what Anthony Red Rose has to say yeah. about the No Limits project. So, Mr. Red Rose, I'd like to welcome you to talk about your new project that's just recently been released. The EP is five tracks in total, vocals, five instrumentals, no limits. Well, it's a project with Lenky Marsden, and we've been working on this project for a, a little while now, and, we, you know, it's out, and it's, it's smashing, you know, doing good, and, you know, I like the response and everything mm. about it. Yeah, I kind of like how you've got obviously the five different vocals, but then also the five instrumentals. You know, we don't often see that when we are releasing music nowadays. Well, you know, the reason why we put the the instrumentals on it is it's just an addition thing because you know dub is the thing now, and if you do the song and put the dub with it, you know people will go for it more. Mm. You know, and it's a it's a good deal. You know, mm. the dubs and the vocals, you know, it's, it's like a combination. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I think that the, the real musical connoisseurs, they want to hear the dub rise music, which we don't see so much of coming out of Jamaica nowadays. Yeah, yeah that's that's true. Um, that's why we, you know, we kind of, you know, like like when you're back in the days when you when Jamaica in the 80s, when you're 
like you're, you're salt fish and you have to buy the flour to get the salt fish. Mm. You know, we put the two of them together and smash in. Smash it. Yeah. I mean, even though there's actually only five different vocals, there's quite a different variety or range of musical flavors and beats. Um, how did you and Lenky come to decide on those five particular tracks? Well, it just happened, you know. Um, we have a combination on it with Bunty Killer and myself and um, a, next, a next song um, with by myself, a, a, a kind of lovers. Is this the ballad? Yeah, a ballad, a ballad thing. Yeah, yeah. And we have a, a dance hall, you call it dance hall, lovers rock. Because yeah. it's dance hall, but it's like dance hall, lovers rock on it too. And we have um, hardcore and, you know, hardcore and softcore. It's a mixture of every little thing, you know. That means if you if you are a person who like a, like hardcore songs or rubber dub songs, you will go for one of the songs. Mm. You know, it's just a different a EP with a difference. Mm. Yeah. I mean, when I sort of listen through to the EP, No Limits, it's kind of like there is something there for everyone's musical ears, whether you want, you know, like straight dancehall or whether you want, like you said, like the Robert of the Lover's Rock dancehall yeah, vibes. Yeah. There's everything on there. Yeah, yeah. There's a mixture, a mixture of every little everything. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, for yourself personally, you and Lenky go back quite a few years, right? Because Lenky has actually worked on some of your own productions way back in the day. Yeah, actually, Lenky worked on a lot of my production. Um... We, I have a production called Quarter to Twelve that was Lenky's first introduction to dance hall, to play on a, the dance hall with him. Mm. Uh, we actually have to fight him for play upon it because him did shy them time. Yeah? Okay. You know, and him no one do it. I mean, I said, no, Lenky, you must play on this. And <laughs> everything worked out. I get five number ones off of that right. project. That project created a storm in the dance hall, mm. you know, the Quarter to Twelve. Oh. Yeah. This was probably what around about 1995, so Simpleton the, yeah, the Cobra exactly. Don Wife. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um Fabi Dali and yeah. Yeah, Bunty Killer, Beanie Man, you know, a whole lot of songs. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, look, what we're going to do is we're going to go right back to Lenky now and actually talk to him about why he did not actually want to work on that project, why he was too shy. We give thanks for your time today, Mr. Red Rose. Thank you too. Less. So Lenky, we were just talking to Mr. Red Rose and he was telling us about how you actually worked on that product, the rhythm quarter to 12, but he said that you were quite resistant to working together because you didn't really want to do it at the time. True, because I was like really shy. I didn't know what to play yet by that time. I was just scared and it's like Red Rose, big producer, big artist, but he gave me the confidence and I just went on and just did it and it became a big hit. First, first real big, smashing it. Here it in the dance hall playing and you're walking down the street, well, then get school, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah as a keyboard player. Cool. So the No Limits EP um, with Red Rose, who's the responsible for the distribution? Vipal. Um, they've been doing a lot of distribution for me from about last year. We have great people to work with. Yeah. It seems like um, they have got a very strong connection with Diwali Records and doing some great works promoting your music to the people of the world. Yeah, man, very good work, good promotion. I'm, you know, really and truly big up to Genie. My people helping me develop the confidence. Yeah. Most definitely. Now, apart from obviously the Anthony Red Rose EP that we've just talked about that's recently been released, we have more new music, don't we? General Degree. Yes. General Degree is an artist that's kind of a legend in his own right. The EP is called The Bodywork EP. Yeah. Three tracks in terms of DJs and three instrumentals. Let's talk about working with General Degree. Well, working with General Degree is like, he's like my friend. We've been working from um, Main Street days. That's the, the Danny Brownie camp. camp. And it's like, so we're coming from far. Um, I, I do a lot of production on his, his label. And he does so much stuff for me and my label. And we're just like good friends, always there for, you know, advice and stuff like that. Mm. Yes. Well, look, General Degree is just over there outside in the yard. Yeah. Let's call him in and let's talk about this brand new EP. Yeah. 
General Degree, we're here at the Area 39 studios. Big up, good to see you once again. Yes, that's nice, nice. Thanks for having me, yeah. So we've just been talking to Lenky about this brand new project, um, the Bodywork EP. Yeah, man, Bodywork EP, three tracks. Um, nice vibe, nice different type of style to me. Dancer, I'm always trying to, to do what, something different. And then Lenky is, uh, is crazy like that, crazy musician. So, yeah, so people could look out for Bodywork. I guess that, you know, with you being almost at the, you know, the forefront of your skills from way back, Lenky being as diverse as, as he is, it's kind of like a marriage made in heaven the way you two work together. Yeah, well, definitely. We, we are friends from for many, many, many years. Mm. Before he got his break, when I was getting my break too. Um, so, well, you know, whenever it comes to music, we share the, the same or similar vibe Vibes. yeah man yeah there's reading that i've built that lenky is a, is a part of when the duality was been made i was a part i was there about, yeah. yeah i was i was the one who you know acts said to push up the clap in the rhythm mm. the, the okay. famous yeah so i was there to instigate that right okay yeah man this ep let's talk about some of the tracks there so there's three tracks there's three from yourself and then there's three instrumentals from Lenky as well so it's quite a unique sort of touch to this project let's talk about bodywork itself okay well bodywork to me i call it a gym song it's a song that is you know the energy of the song what it's talking about work make your body work make your body work it's like more like you're in the gym and you're you're working out okay. so i i always call it the gym song there's not a song called wagonist um you know it's uh, talking about people who only come come around when things is happening you know they're, they're there for what you can give them what they can get mm. and when it's not happening they hop off right. so it's about the organist and then the other song uh, we're still thinking about it, the title with the title um i know the punchline is I, 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 sexy body i think it's a sexy body girls um that song is about the girls them um, nice different type of um cards in dancehall kind of beat so i think it's a very unique ep body work definitely is and i think that from the airplay that i'm seeing that it's getting it's definitely going to be a surefire hit for 2019 but what i wanted to ask you now you and lenky go back so far back to main street days as you were saying um, what was it like working with lenky back then he must have been a kid right then yeah lenky was just quiet and shy you know you 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 know lenky you would say lenky play this and he was he's a great keyboard player and then but he still would turn to you especially when i'm building my rhythms and ask him to play things is he wants me to like give him some creativity of what to play he's like he's not he's not the person who goes oh i'm lanky so no he, he he wants to hear your ideas share ideas and stuff so lanky was just always that labor quiet person i think it's just lately lanky started the interviews <laughs> yeah yeah man to be honest with you so yeah that's why that's his personality yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, man. Okay. I mean, um, you yourself, you know, you, you've, you've been a dancehall veteran for years now. And I can say we can call you a veteran because you've not been in this for just a couple of years, right? You started out, what, in the late 80s? Um, uh, um, yeah, I started the late 80s, 89, 90, th th at that time. And I guess one of the reasons why um, I, I was heard on records from those times, before I even boss at every producer who heard me they want to voice me the big name producers when they hear uh, this little you know maga youth so to speak with his big voice yeah they, they always want to work from bobby digital steely and cleavy um you name it yeah everybody just want to voice me because they say no you, you sound good so i was on a lot of these big rhythms just the last part of 89 90 um, before i got my break in 92 with the song granny can I just say something about that song to you? That song gave me so much problems in trying to access it on vinyl back then. To this day, I don't think I actually have that song on a seven inch vinyl. Um, I had to buy an album by the name of Granny just to get that song. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, I didn't understand the record thing those days. So I wouldn't know what really. But one thing I know that that song wasn't going to come out because I asked the producer not to release that song really yeah man i okay. begged him please don't release it when i did it because i was a hardcore dj hardcore dj and all kind of you know other lyrics but when i did that song i just did it out of fun i was just joking around when i did granny and 
there was a mistake in the song what is wheel and come again i can't catch that no there that part is a big mistake okay. and i and that's not how the song was supposed to go but danny brown said no let it stay it sounds like a you know a vibe. vibe and when i begged him not to release the song i said danny i don't want to come out sound like a, a old lady i can voice a different song on the rhythm i begged him twice when i was in the country i called him from the call box and said please don't release the song don't release the song and he didn't listen to me so give thanks <laughs> <laughs> the rest is history as they say though yeah. of course well look we want to give you thanks for your time today just to share a little bit of an insight into this new project that's been released body Walk, works we're going to bring it back to lenky now and just see what else he's working on right now we give thanks for your time today yeah man thanks and check out my ep body work right now yeah so Lenky, there's so much of a buzz about these two projects that you've just released with General Degree and Mr. Redrose, who we've just spoken to. What does the rest of 2019 have in store for you personally? Well, um, I'm working on a project right now, instrumental again. Um, this is going to be me featuring Sly and Robbie. It's going to be a big, 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 big project coming out soon. And it's going to be like very awesome for the, the throwback in the Jamaican history with the lengthy modern sound to it. So that's I'm looking forward to releasing that this year. Mm. Yeah. It seems like music plays such a big part of your life that you're probably making music every single day. I do music every day, 24-7, around the clock, no time for sleep. I try to get some sleep. But it's all music. If it's not producing, it's actually playing the instrument itself and listening a lot of music also yeah so we need time we need more hours in the day real and truly True. yeah well look i want to give thanks to yourself and obviously general degree and mr red rose for their time today as well i have to also say a big shout out to your management brian and also a big shout out to genie for making this possible yes genie and brian man thank you genie thank you and, and brian for for helping me for the in the last one year one half year to build a brand Give Lenky the confidence as the musician and the producer and, you know what I'm saying, sh shine the light and thank you guys for everything. We give thanks for your time today and I look forward to coming back here again on a future trip. We're going to reason some more for real, Lenky. Give thanks. All right. Well, you know, the next time you come, I hope I'm not so shy. Give thanks. Yeah, man. Bless up. Big up.